there's been three different pieces of content that have independently entered into my life that I've come across. And the core message of those three pieces of content have all been the same. And that is originality is overrated. Let me explain. The concept was first made um, formal to me by Austin Kleon's book, Steal Like an Artist. And basically, one of the, eh, if you were to sum it up in one sentence, the book would be, uh, if you steal from one author, it's plagiarism. If you steal from many authors, it's research. And so interchange the word author with artist and you get the picture. Inspiration is everywhere. And so it's our job as artists and creators to take that piece of inspiration that we get from a work that we see, whether it's a song, whether it's a dance, a movie, a speech, we take that little piece and then we insert it into whatever we're doing. And it's not a plagiaristic act because whatever we're ultimately creating is original to us because we're the ones doing it. If you took somebody's book and just simply wrote the same words everyone else did or that the author did, well, that's plagiaristic. But by taking ideas here and there and patchworking it together, it's not plagiaristic. The two other sources that um, come from different fields even are the first, the one that I thought was interesting was uh, the episode I just listened to on Tim Ferriss' podcast with Tim Dixon and Naval Ravikant. And they were discussing Web3. And Tim Dixon, Chris Dixon, Chris Dixon, Chris Dixon, was saying that Web3's development is going to be exponentially faster than Web2's development, which was a lot of SaaS companies, um, because Web3, everything's open sourced. All the code is on the blockchain. And so using that code, that code is actually like Lego pieces where new developers can come in and a problem that's already been solved they can just take that chunk of code and insert it into whatever product that they're building. And that's never happened before. So um, it's gonna be it's gonna be huge. And so how does that relate? I mean, to me it's just it's a problem that's already been solved. Just copy it, just use it. It's inspiration, use it. Not everything has to be original. And then the last piece um, that I came across was a book I've been reading called uh, Richer, Wiser, Happier by William Green. And in it, he interviews a whole bunch of investors. And one of them was this uh, guy from India named Monish Pabrai, I believe. Monish Pabrai, something like that. And uh, Monish, he, he grew up in the slums of India with less than one dollar on less than one dollar a day his whole family i don't know whatever the the picture is he came from a very very uh poor background and he was inherently just naturally smart and so in academics he did <coughs> he excelled and somehow he got over to clemson university um some on scholarship and at clemson he was introduced to warren buffett uh, the idea of Warren Buffett or Warren Buffett's work. He didn't meet him, but and Monish, really all he did was consume all the material that was was published on uh, Warren Buffett. And what he did, he just copied everything. He, he copied the playbook. He, he basically had no original thoughts. All he did was just execute on Warren Buffett's playbook. And for in that this scenario, it's not common for people to do it because it takes patience. And Warren Buffett is 
famous for never selling stocks. He buys and he holds for life. And that's part of how he's gotten rich. So it's not a glamorous approach, but it's very effective if you buy at the right, um, if you value stocks correctly and buy at the right time and put enough capital behind it. So a little bit of tangent there, but what am I saying? Many of the problems we find ourselves facing today have already been solved. Working hard does not mean slugging through work and investing hours and just simply um, burning calories. Working hard often means thinking hard and to find the most efficient and effective way to solve a problem. And that might mean finding the person who's already solved the problem you're trying to solve. You have two problems that you need to solve. One is finding the people that have already solved the problems. And two, learning to one B, learning how they solved them. And the bigger problem that you need to solve for is actually executing the solution. Execution and implementation of the solution is usually the hardest part about solving any problem. So if you can do that, you're well on your way to just exponential growth. Peace.